Well, welcome to church. It's our turn to blend our voices, to sing together. And our first song will be taken from Collected Gospel Song number 13. Collected Gospel Songs number 13. We appreciate the good start that we've had from the choir. It's in the love of Jesus, something wonderful by John Peterson, um, beautifully sung by our choir. And preceding that, we had Brother Mike and Brother Godwin giving us the organ voluntary. It's our turn to sing together. We begin with um, songs of praise and adoration for masses, countless as the sons, which daily I receive from Jesus, my Redeemer's hands. My soul, what canst thou give? The best return for one like me, so wretched and so poor, and that is my state. And perhaps some of you will identify with that state. It's from his gift to draw a play and ask him still for more, which is part of what we are here to do this morning. Okay, we take verse 1, 4, and 5. Verses 1, 4, and 5 after the introduction. to join us in singing the next song, which is Majesty, Majesty, worship his majesty unto Jesus, to glory, honor, and praise. The chorus, we take it um, twice. Majesty, worship his majesty. Let us do that from the bottom of our heart this morning.
Father, may you receive our thanks and praises unto his holy name. We take another song, again, begging the indulgence of the orchestra to sing with us. Precious promise God has given to the weary passerby on the way from earth to heaven. I will guide thee with my eye. Okay. never closed yeah. like yours and mine yeah. when we sleep but as far as God is concerned our eyes are always open yeah. during the day and in the night and yeah. it is with those eyes that he said he will guide you yeah. he will guide me yeah. may you do that for us yeah. one more song before we return to our hymn book I will not forget the yeah. Well, the choir will um, lead us in this very well. It's their song, which we all want to sing together. Sweet is the promise. I will not forget you. God will not forget you. God will not forget me. In the name of Jesus.
that is really reassuring. Let's take one more song before we have the opening congregational prayer, and that should be 507 from our hymn book. 507, I always go to Jesus. I don't know about you, that has always been a place of refuge for me and for the testimonies of people that I know when we always go to Jesus, Jesus is always there to meet with us. Okay, we're going to sing all those three verses prayerfully standing for those who can stand up at the end of which Brother Lighton will lead us in congregational prayer, 507. I always go to Jesus and travel on His and every one of us. Lord, you've taken us through another week and you've brought us again into your house. Lord, accept our thanks. Accept our praises for your protection over us, for provision, for healing, for answers to many prayers. Lord, accept our thanks and praises. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your promised presence all the pilgrim way. He said you will never leave us nor forsake us and that is exactly what you've been doing for us. Lord, accept our thanks and praise. No, we pass through the valley of shadows of death. You've been with us. Lord, accept our thanks. Oh, we can thank you enough even for a day like this that we can come to this place, to your house, Oh, the gate of heaven. Yes. Oh, the closest we can get to heaven. Yeah. Lord, accept our thanks and praises. Amen. Oh, Lord, we just pray that you come down this morning yes. and bless each and every one of Amen. us. 
Oh, we've come with troubles, we come with challenges, we come with issues that we can't even discuss with anyone. But we know we can discuss them with you. And you can answer our prayers. Lord, I beg for us, O Lord. Meet every need, O Lord. Open our hearts to receive your word. Oh, as your word will be coming out this morning, let it come out with power. Oh, and break our sin in every soul. Set sinners free. Sanctify saints, O Lord. Fill sinners, sanctify souls with your spirit. Lord, heal every sickness. Lord, answer every prayer. We will continue to praise you forever. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Once again, you are welcome to the house of the Lord. May the Lord bless you all for coming this morning. And for those joining online on www.apostolicfaith.org.uk, we extend our warm welcome to you too, wherever you may be. We pray that the Lord who is here with us We be with you there too and um, surely bless you as well. Please join again if you can, and we encourage everyone to do so. Our family forum that we've been announcing this afternoon, that will be the continuation of our um, discussion on cultural understanding, and that is going to be at um, 4 p.m. Don't let us forget that. Um, you, we join through the usual tiny.cc um, AFM church. Um, the one that some of you are using now, or the one that you usually use normally to join our virtual uh, meeting in the afternoon. Then during the course of the week, all our meetings will run as usual. Uh, Bible study on Wednesday at 7.30, prayer meeting at 8 p.m. on Friday, 8 to 10 on Saturday morning, uh, continuation of prayer meeting. Next Sunday, should Jesus tarry, we have all our meetings as we have been having since the beginning of our service today. Webcast Elementary Sunday School at 9.30, Junior and Other Sunday School at 10, Devotional Service at 11.15, and um, Virtual Prayer Meeting at 5 p.m. We had a plan to resume full, fully um, our Sunday School classes um, a very good example is what we saw this morning when one of our children would like to know what are you guys talking about? Characteristics? What a word is that? Uh, but of course, in their own language, all these are broken down when they are in their classes. And truly, we've been looking as a church in terms of when we should resume fully all our different classes. We've been watching attendance. This is what has been going on for some time in all our branches since we know people are just trying to come to church, adjusting to church little by little. Just last Sunday, we took uh, uh, a kind of um, attendance of all our churches in terms of different age groups to know whether now we have our children and their parents arriving on time to be in the, in, in the, uh, in the church for them to have um, um, their own class. So that is ongoing, and that classes will soon resume, and that is going to be at every branch. Um, there are also considerations, imagine guidelines about COVID, that we have our COVID advisory group uh, committee. They study this and they're advising us. All this we are putting together. We have not forgotten that we should return to our uh, normal Sunday school classes. We are working on that, and that will happen very soon. I heard some of you clapped this morning. It's, it's, it's unusual. To, to clap in our church, but I think it's something worth clapping about. It's something worth rejoicing about. Uh, that is the um, installation, kind of, of our junior choir in all our branch churches happening today. It's supposed to have happened before now. I explained this in the prayer room. I don't want anyone to think why today. Uh, um, well, it's today because today is when I'm around to be able to um, be part of it. Uh, Brother Mike, who is the national coordinator, has been working on when they should resume their, uh, after they've completed their training. All of you will remember in camp meeting 2019, I announced publicly for those who want to learn music uh, and be part of the choir and orchestra nationally, actually internationally, uh, uh, for them to register. And many people registered after that camp meeting. And that uh, uh, training has been going on since camp 2019. Up till around August, 
when I was made to understand that they have now done, gone through all that they needed to go through, voice production, sight reading, rudiment of music, they passed. And as a result, in our normal tradition, when people have gone through that and they are learning their instrument, they are considered junior choir. And that is why we are starting that today. They will be taking part in uh, um, um, making our Sunday school to be full in terms of singing at the end. It may not be all of them as you saw this morning, maybe a solo, maybe a quartet among them from time to time, and it may be all of them too. And also the senior choir here, they are ready once they see that they are doing very good, and especially on their instrument, very, very important that we take that seriously. They know that. I've met with them nationally, actually, can I say internationally, because they are all over the, the place, all over our jurisdiction. I've met with them in terms of online to talk to them about the importance of instruments and things, like, and they are working on that. So as that progresses, by the grace of God, they will be joining uh, the senior choir, and then our platform will be extended. Um, don't ask me whether backward or forward or sideways. I may not be part of that, but again, I will rejoice to see that happen uh, by the grace of God. So please, as they have completed this, their two-year training, and now in their instrument, let us continue to pray for them. We really appreciate their patience, their effort, everything that they have gone through, and all the teachers in every branch that have, that have been taking part in all of this, we want to publicly appreciate all of them for a job well done. During the course of the week, we also got an SOS, which I sent out to all ministers, and for all ministers to disseminate that among ourselves in terms of a, a prayer request of one of us back in Nigeria kidnapped. Um, we cried to the Lord, not only here, but all over the places. And um, just this morning, I got the text that our dear brother Alabi has been released from Amen. the kidnappers. We thank God for that. We should not take such a thing as a joke. It's a serious matter. When you are kidnapped by these people, the kind of thing that you go through, uh, but um, we just thank God that our brother has been released. Our God is still answering prayers. All our other requests in the name of Jesus, he will answer. Amen. Okay, we continue now with our devotional service by listening to our first special, which is a quartet on the Jericho Road by Donald Microson to be sung by four of our choir members, um, T.A., I think that's Topia Jibola, Esther Jelenke, Ayua Jibola, and Michael Wolabi, if I get them right, I think. They use um, initial here. And then at the end of that first special, we're going to have a testimony. I was telling someone, actually, Brother Francis, I said, when anybody wants to give a special testimony, they get in touch with the pastor. They say, please, I want to give a testimony. But now, I want to give a testimony. Who do I get in touch with? And he was just laughing. Uh, so I, I will give a testimony at the end of first special. And then we have the last special, which is my hope. It's in the law by Norman J. Clayton. Um, by the choir. And then our word of exhortation this morning is coming from our guest preacher, that is Brother B.C. Odulaja from our Watson Church in New Jersey, uh, uh, New York, and um, visiting us. His wife is also with us here, Sister Abose de Odulaja. Uh, the word of they are not new to us, they have been here from time to time. The word of exhortation will be coming from him this morning, at the end of which everyone will be encouraged to fall down on our knees and make sure that we pray, pray through to. Christian experiences and blessings.
Jericho. Oh, Nigeria. Does the world seem all wrong? Does the world seem all wrong? And the heavy load. Oh, heavy load. Just bring it to Christ. Just bring it to Christ. Your sins are confessed. Your sins are confessed. On the Jericho road. On oh, Nigeria. In the blessed yeah, on the Jericho road, on the Jericho road, there is room for just two. There's room for just two. No more and no less. No more and no less. Just Jesus and you. Just Jesus and you. Each more and he'll bear. Each sorrow you share, each sorrow you share. There's never a care, there's never a care. Oh, Jesus is there. Oh, Jesus is there. On the Jericho road, on the Jericho road, blind and mighty are his life was a void. His life was a void. So empty and flat. So empty and flat. Then Jesus appeared. Then Jesus appeared. No word brought in word. No word brought in sight. On the Jericho road. On the Jericho road. On the Jericho Road, on the Jericho Road, there's room for just two. There's room for just two. No more and no less. No more and no less. Just Jesus and you. Just Jesus and you.
exactly 65 years ago today, a baby boy was born. And the parents named him Isaac Olushola Ishola. And that is the one standing before you. I want to give God all the glory and honor for making me to see this day. I was born into a very, very prosperous and rich family. During my primary school days, my parents were so rich and they were helping other people. But by the time I finished primary education, time for me to go to secondary school, they became very poor. You've heard this several times and it's something I like to say because I give all glory and honor to Jesus for yes. doing just that. Amen. That they could not afford to send me to secondary school. All efforts failed to seek help from other people to help me to go to secondary school. That couldn't happen. I eventually landed in a trade center where I was learning plumbing. And it was there on a Sunday like this in the afternoon when a group of um, association of visiting secretaries from the apostolic faith at Ijebo, they visited our trade center and I heard the word of God. Amen. And I decided this is for me. Mm. I will take it in, I will confess my sins to God and I would like now to become a child of God. God. I prayed that Sunday afternoon, heaven came down into my soul. Amen. I know when the work was done. Amen. I know the date, I know the time, and I know the exact location. Amen. I went to the back of a classroom all alone, having received conviction in my heart that what I heard is true. Yes. And I prayed there and Jesus saved my soul. Amen. He forgave me my sins. Amen. I've said it many times that um, uh, my experience, personally to me, was a unique one. I got up and I didn't know myself again, in the sense that I have to be feeling myself. Are you still the same Isaac? Are you still in the same flesh? Because God took away all the desire God. for what young people like to do. Mm. I have done it all mm. as a young person. But when God saved my soul, all the desire were wiped off. God. And then you know, from that day onward, December 1, 1974, my life became uh, 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 a, a life that is autopiloted by God himself. Amen. Before I finished in that uh, uh, trade center, I got a job. Um, before long, as I've said this many times, you know, when you are poor, young people take it as a blessing at times. Amen. When you are poor, you, you don't know how to spend money. You don't know what they do with money because you are so poor. So when I started receiving salary, I, 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 I don't know that people can have money and be spending because I've, that has never been my life. So I was just saving the money. I was just saving the money. Little did I know that God had a plan for me. Amen. That money that I didn't know how to spend, that I was saving, was the same money God made to be so much that I had to remit myself to send myself to Manchester University Amen. without any penny from anybody. Amen. So uh, if you don't have, it can be a blessing. Yeah. God may be working towards something. That is what God did for me. He brought me up here in that uh, um, September of 1983, and I can tell you that from that time, it has been from one level of success to another. Amen. In terms of academic achievement, God has always been there. You, you don't know, and I cannot explain it honestly, how someone that the parents could not afford to send to secondary school can now have a PhD degree. That is what God did for me. Amen. Just as I was in that PhD degree, God did something else. He gave me the bone of my bone, Amen. the flesh of my flesh, Amen. a Christian wife. Amen. May not be beautiful, as some people may say, they have beautiful wife. Uh, but mine is even more beautiful Amen. in terms of having the beauty of God in our heart. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. We have been up and down together on this our journey, but I can tell you, as I said, my life has been autopiloted. Amen. It's not that I'm struggling to do anything again. Amen. It's a life of ease. 
It's a life of uh, uh, God just doing what he wants to do with my life. Yes, we have had issues, problems. All of you know you've been praying for us to have a child. Uh, um, miscarriages upon miscarriages upon miscarriages. And the only one that stayed came out stillborn. And since that time, Jesus has always been there. We, 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 they, they recorded about, um, was it 75,000 plus in the new assignment God is giving us? And someone was telling me, that 75,000 are your children. Mm. Uh, and that is true by the grace of God in terms of giving account of what God has given one. So the fact that one may not have his own biological uh, child or children is not the end of the world. God has a way yes. of just bridging that gap. Yeah. And that is what the Lord has done. Amen. When the uh, uh, position of a pastor became vacant here in year 2000, and I was uh, uh, in touch with by our Portland headquarters. It was a surprising thing for me. I wasn't getting ready for it. I was getting ready for my professorship just to make sure that I, I just liked my study and my research. But when that call came, God uh, blessed me with willingness Amen. to say, I will. And my wife supported me. And then from that time up till now, you have been wonderful. You have been supportive. Your prayers have been carrying us along. And as I was preparing for today, 65 years, I was telling myself, having been uh, a management educator myself, I know that you need to prepare for your retirement. Don't wait until you retire, then you say, I'm retired. Something may happen in one's head. So I have been planning that at 65, I need to start scaling down to get ready for retirement. But little did I know that I was planning for restarting instead of retirement. And then when the call came, that I have to be transferred from here to Weka as the DS. Well, thank God for my wife. We Amen. prayed about it again, and it's like, wherever the Lord leads, that is where we will go, Amen. and by the special grace of God, we are going there. Amen. And we know with your prayer support, that is what has been really getting us going. Amen. I can tell you that, Amen. because the kind of a thing we are going to get ourselves into is something that you know, where the former uh, um, DS Bra Paul always say that um, oversized shoe. Mine is not oversized shoe. I don't even know what to call it. In oversized shoe, you can still put your leg in and see the thing like that. I, I, mine is not even that at all. And you all know me. If not for your support and your prayers and the way that we've been working together, the success God has given us here is God that has done it. So we are looking unto God to do the same thing for us yeah. by the grace of God. For all of you here in Bexley Branch in particular, I say thank you so much on behalf of Stella and myself. Of course, we still have one more Sunday to spend in Bexley before we go. Just one more Sunday, and by the grace of God, that Sunday will be my valedictory farewell service here with all of you when, by the grace of God, I may need to say a bit more. But for now, I just want to give all glory, yeah. honor, and praise to God for what he has done for me. Thank you. I hope the pastor will forgive us. We want to just sing happy birthday. I didn't take any permission, but I'm late to do so. Can we stand to sing happy birthday?
I bring you greetings from um, New, New Jersey or New York. Um, all the brethren send their love. This morning, by the grace of God, we talk about waiting, waiting for God. The promises of God, they are worth waiting for. Yes. In the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3, we read, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. As if to defend himself, God says several places in the scripture, I am not a man to lie. God never lies. His promises are yea and amen. When God gives you a promise, you can take it to the bank. And you know God has good promises for every one of us. He said the thought that I have towards you is the thought of good, not the thought of evil. You may not know what a man is thinking about you, even the person sitting next to you, you may not know what he or she is thinking about you. But God has good thought about you. Is the thought of good, not the thought of evil, to bring you a perfect end. In the scriptures, we, uh, in the book of Genesis, we read the story of Abraham and Sarah. They were, Abraham loved God. The Bible tells us of Abraham that he believed God. Yeah. It was counted unto him for righteousness. Yes. Right. But Abraham had an issue. He had no child. God gave him a promise that he was going to have a child. He was 75 years old then. The child did not come until he was 100 years old. That was 25 years of waiting. But you can wait for God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. When you wait for God, the results will be good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, along the road, the, there were some detours here and there. Right. They tried to help God. Sometimes we try to help God. You know, thinking God is not moving fast enough. That was the case of Habakkuk here. Habakkuk was not even actually talking about himself. If you read the book of Habakkuk, um, Superintendent General gave a sermon on it not too long ago, which is good for reading. Habakkuk, the nation of Israel had already been taken captive. Judah was under siege. And God was going to use a hidden nation to punish them. And um, Habakkuk said, that doesn't sound right. As if to know, to say he knew better than God. He said, how can you take a nation? Well, yeah, yeah we, we are sinners. We have gone away from, you know, what we know to do, what you have taught us, that is all right. But these people are worse than us. 
Are you going to use them to punish us? God said, just wait and see what I'll do. You know, God had told the children of Israel before when they sinned against him, he was going to punish them. But that nation that he uses to punish them, they're going to give an account to. So, Rabakko said, I don't see, it was like he was arguing with God in the court of law. I don't see God how he can win this case. <laughs> but God said, when I say something, I'll bring it to pass. Yes. The way God accomplishes it is beyond our own comprehension. Yeah. You know, when we were young, or when we had young children, you ever travel with your children? You go into a place, you know how many times they ask you, have you got dead yet? Because in, my mind, in their mind, they cannot comprehend it. They thought, when you say you're going to a place, you go, um, now you, you get into the car, the next five minutes you are there. But that's not always the case. No. Sometimes it's futile trying to explain to them because at the age they were then, they cannot comprehend it. And so it is with us and God. Yes. We never can see where God is coming from. Mm -hmm. We don't know where he is going. No. And so sometimes we become confused and say, God, I seem to say, are you thinking right? <laughs> but the little mind that we have, he gave it to us. Yeah. That's true, though. So how can you now say if he's not doing the right thing? God always do, does what is right. When God promised Abraham and that they were going to have the child, along the way, there were some detours and then, you know, problems, you know. When we take matters into our hand, we usually get problems. We usually get problems. You see, he got problems. Now, they're looking to God to solve to that problem also. Anyway, God being a merciful God, God. intervened, Amen. okay, and said, the child that I promise you is the one that's going to come out of your power. After 25 years of waiting, he, the child came. Even Sarah herself said, who could have taught? I read that to you in um, Genesis 21, verse 7. He said, and she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck, for I have born him a son in his old age. Praise be to God. Amen. You know, we all have dreams. We all have dreams, and um, we want them accomplished. The sooner, the better. But anything good, it's worth waiting for. Yes. Even in the natural, giving birth to a uh, having a baby, it doesn't happen overnight. There's a lot of waiting in between. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of preparation in between. Right. There's a lot of uh, things, issues to be resolved in between. Mm -hmm. But eventually, nine months or so, the child comes. You want to build a house? It takes some time. Yes. Take some planning. 
takes some savings. It takes some hard work to be able to do it. But if the planning is good, the finances are in place, it will come out good in the end of it. We thank God. God promised the children of Israel deliverance from slavery. It took 400 years for them to be delivered. But in the end, they were delivered. When they were delivered, they sang the songs of Zion. They sang the songs of victory. May God let you sing the song of victory. When he has done that which he has promised you, and I said, even if God doesn't give you a personal promise, he has given to all of us good promises. We will talk about some of those promises that God has given unto us. In John chapter 14, verse 1, we read, John chapter 14, verse 1, It reads, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. If we never accomplished anything in this world, if we never build a house, have a child, or anything of such, this is a promise we should hold on to. Yes. How long do we live? The Bible promises of 70 years. Before that 70 year comes, uh, those of us who have been there, you'll know what I'm saying. You start having some aches and pains. And um, you see that uh, it wasn't the way it was. When you were a teenager, or a young man. So we are not designed. This machine is not designed to last forever. We are machines, you know. Beautifully crafted by God. We are the wonderful works of God. Have you thought about it? The David said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. So, there is a better place. There is a better place. A place where there is no aches, where there is no pain, where there is no death, where there is no commotion. No misunderstanding. Sometimes we misunderstand each other. Sometimes I say something. You misinterpret it. Or you you just read that language wrong. It becomes an issue. But in that place, none of such. None of such. He says there is nothing there that defies. There is no death, no sorrow, no sin, nothing that will make us to be downcast. There is no depression there. You know, very often we think, I'm sick, I'll go and see a doctor. And, um, well, it's all right. I don't say don't go and see a doctor. But that's if God gives them 
give them the, 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 the way out. You know, I said to myself, uh, you know, if doctors don't die, then we'll all be doctors. <laughs> what am I saying? I'm not trying to diminish their work, but what I'm saying is that God is the only one yes. we can truly trust in yes. that will never fail us. Amen. He has better plans for us. Yes. The, the plans are good. And um, in... Um, in um, Second Peter three thirteen. Second Peter three thirteen. We read that Second Peter three thirteen. Okay. It reads Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, Amen. wherein dwelleth righteousness. He tells us, wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such a thing, be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of, of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given unto him, had written unto you. We look for a new heavens and a new earth, yeah. wherein dwelleth righteousness. Amen. And while we are looking, looking means we involves waiting also. There is something that we need to be doing while we are waiting. Jesus died over 2,000 years ago, and um, he said he's coming again. Yeah. The angel told those disciples who were opportune to, to see him as he was uh, taken up to heaven, that this same Jesus, Amen. whom you see go up into heaven, will so come in like manner as you have seen him gone. That is our hope, brethren. Yes. That is our purpose of coming here, yes. to prepare for the coming again of the Lord. Yes. Those promises are sure. Yes. Jesus will come again. Yes. We are waiting for that. Yes. While we are waiting, let's make sure the Bible says that we should uh, uh, make sure of our calling and election. Yes. We should make sure of our calling and election. Uh, we don't want to be like those foolish virgins. In Matthew chapter 25, we are told that the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamp and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Well, it's been over 2,000 years. Jesus has still not come. Many of us would have slept, means we die. You know, Christians who die are sleeping because that's not their end. When unbelievers die, they died. Yeah. Because the next thing for them was, is to face judgment, eternal judgment. There is no reversal. 
there will be no mercy that time. But this is the time of mercy. Amen. This is the time where you can make your calling sure. Yeah. The Bible says today is the day yeah. of salvation. Yeah. It says today when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Do you know Jesus? Do you know him? We just had a testimony about meeting, the, meeting Jesus. Do you have an experience where you can point to that Jesus saved me at this place? If not, you can do that today. Yes. The Bible says today is the day yes. of salvation. Yes. It says today when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've heard it several times, mm -hmm. but God is merciful. Yes. He has not cut you off. Mm -hmm. God didn't give anybody any guarantee. Mm -hmm. Even though he says 70, how many countless millions have died without even reaching their 30? But God is offering you life eternal. Amen. Amen. Why don't you take hold of it? Why don't you grab it? It's free for the asking. He says anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That is his good pleasure to, come to, to, to save all the call upon him. Mm -hmm. We told about this, uh, 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 this, um, these people who are waiting for the virgins who are waiting according to uh, uh, various translations. These virgins are people who knew the Lord. They were saved mm -hmm. at one time. But somehow they did not keep up their consecration. Have you been distracted? Have you been taking the things of the Lord lightly? Have you, uh, you know, sometimes people think, oh, well, if this person is doing it, I can do it also. Is that what the Bible says? God forbid that... Uh, Preachers and pastors are doing something wrong. But I tell you, if they are doing something wrong, don't do it. Don't do it. Because God is not going to judge you by what anybody does. He's going to judge you by his words. Yes. True. By the grace of God, we know that they are doing what does says the Lord. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying perchance, mm -hmm. it's Paul who said, mm -hmm. if I, yes. mm -hmm. we know Paul, no. mm -hmm. if I come and tell you something contrary, mm -hmm. don't believe me. Mm -hmm. Don't believe me. Mm -hmm. The word of God supersedes what any man may say. Yes. So that's what we want to hold on to. Yeah. We don't want to be like the foolish virgins. No. We want to make sure we have our loins guided, yeah. our shoes on our feet, yeah. our shoes laced. Yeah. We don't want to trip. We want to uh, focus yeah. on Jesus, yeah. who is the author and finisher of our faith. Yes. Amen. 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 We are waiting. Right. The trumpet can sound at any time. Yes. The trumpet can sound at any time. I know we all want to get married. We all want to have children. But so uh, I, I'm sorry to say that, that that trumpet can sound before you got that marriage done. That's true. Bless you, brother. That's true. So why don't you prepare for the most important thing first? Make sure your names are written in the book of life. Yeah. He says anyone whose name is not found written in the book of life will be thrown into the lake of fire. Yeah. 
That's not where we want to go. No. That's not where God planned for us. No. The Bible makes it plain that God planned that place for the devil and his angels. Yes. So why would you want to follow him? We want to follow the Lord. Yes. We want him to help us. That's why Jesus, at the end of that parable, he said, in that chapter, he said, watch. Let us watch. The Lord is coming soon. As we wait, let us be occupied in the things of the Lord. Let our thoughts be the thoughts of heaven. Let our, thought, our desire be towards God. Let our, uh, let our actions be ones that portray people that are going to heaven. There is no need for anybody to... See, this way... We are doing it is for our own good. We are doing it is for our own good. God didn't have to make heaven for us. He could have just destroyed all of us. But he, God is faithful and kind enough. He has made heaven for us. So why would we not take advantage of it? Why would we be blindfolded? with the things of this world. Have you ever seen a powerful man in this world? Go and read history. Who will not die? There is none. You know, when they are yet alive, while well, they can boast uh, about heaven and earth, you look at Nebuchadnezzar, he said, this kingdom, I made it with my own hand, but God struck him down. Yeah. Even you don't even have to say that. No. Whether you say that, even those who say things that are good, at one point in their life, they become helpless. You become helpless. You can't lift your hand, you cannot lift your leg, you cannot. Uh, when we were young, we thought we'd be young forever. It's not so. It is not so, I can tell you that. Take advantage of the gospel. The gospel is good. God is good. He loves us. He has gone to prepare a place for us. He said, when I am done, I am coming to take you to be with, so that you can be with me forever. What a hope we have. What a hope we have. If you never amass, if you never own a house, never own a car, never own a degree, never own a bank account, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, All that you will need, God has already prepared. Amen. You won't need social security. You won't need anything. How much do they pay you for social security? Poultry sum. Oh, but God has even prepared that Amen. all that we need. He said mansions. Amen. He said mansions. Amen. He is going to give you a mansion. Amen. He's going to give me a mansion. Amen. Why don't we hold on to him? Amen. Why don't we trust him with all our heart? Amen. Why don't you wait and trust his promises? They will happen as Amen. he has said. Amen. Let us come and pray. The altars are open. If you have not yet got hold of heaven, come and get hold of heaven today. Make sure your names are written in the book of life. God bless you.
Thank you, our Lord and our God. When you promise us, we can trust you. Knowing full well that you are not a man that you should lie. That which you have said you would do. We're looking, we're waiting, and we're expecting your coming. That day when the trump of God shall sound, and the righteous shall be raptured with the Lord. O oh Lord, count us worthy. Yeah. As we call upon you on our knees now, we ask that you send down that assurance, O oh God, Amen. even as you save our souls and you sanctify and make us fit for heaven. Yes, Heal, O oh Lord God, Amen. deliver, Amen. send us home with joy and rejoicing. Amen. Thank you for answered prayers, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. Amen.